So Friday night, I got home from work and I started my little flooring project. Let's go! started right back there in the laundry room and I managed to get all the way out of the laundry room on Friday night and then yesterday I went ahead and I did the kitchen which is here and then we had to meet up with the living area in here This was sort of the tricky spot right here, this wall. I had to make sure everything lined up here and then I had to come over here and make sure everything met at this point right here so that right here is actually my first seam where this one met with this one. So that was the tricky part, but I got it and it's looking really good. So I've got my little workstation set up here it's been raining off and on the last couple days, so I put up this little tent. And I've got my table saw, I got my jigsaw, I got my chop saw. We're ready to saw some stuff. So the reason I'm making this video is because I just want you guys to know if you're gonna get your floors from Costco and get this brand flooring, which we have, I don't want you to feel intimidated because it's not really that hard to install. It does take some time and it does take a special couple of tricks and tips that I can show you. What you do is basically you can cut some small pieces of flooring like this. And so when you use this to, to hit the hammer and you just put that thing right there and you can hit this side and that will kind of butt everything up this way. There is a tool made for this, but um, I feel like these work better. And about every row, I want to make a new one of these because it'll start delaminating right here. So on this long run, probably I'll do one and a half rows or something like that. And I'll check this and see how it's looking. And then we'll put um, duct tape on the top of it. So this was my last one right here. You can see it kind of smashes through right in there. And you can see where it's delaminating right there. And the problem with this, when it starts to delaminate like that, is it'll start affecting this edge on this board. So we don't want that at all. You can see that this is sitting much higher here. And if you hit it in and this part, this part down here fails, then it actually goes through and it'll start delaminating this edge, which is not good. These just don't take that long to make and so I've got about nine more rows. I'm going to make about six more of these and hopefully we'll be able to get through with those and I'll show you how to do it real quick. I've got a couple pieces of scrap here. Let's go ahead and cut some of these up. We're gonna wanna cut off this end here because you know, if we hit that with a hammer, it's just gonna smash.
Okay, so now what you want to do is just, the duct tape is going to basically just keep this thing from just the first time you hit it from just blowing apart. So we're going to take a bunch of duct tape. We're going to put it on so that you're using about half of it on the board. The other half will just kind of hang off. And I've experimented with a couple different kinds of tape to see which one's going to hold up the best. So far, it has been a pretty even race between duct tape and actual duct tape, ducting tape. I thought because that was more of a metal that it might hold up better, but it really doesn't keep that from just blowing out right away. So this will work for, you know, probably nine or 10 boards and then you'll want to replace it and just watch this edge and make sure that this isn't getting smashed. And when that starts delaminating, just switch to a new one, throw that one away and moving on. It doesn't take that long to make them, like I said, so it's worth just making a bunch of them, having them there. So you can just keep cruising along. So I just do this like maybe two times, three times around, two and a half, whatever feels good to you. And then I just try to take a little piece of tape and fold that over. And this is just gonna give all this a lot of padding, cushion, blowout resistance. So I don't know how well you can see this, but I've got my seams staggered in three different sections, three different rows. So I've got kind of a medium piece, a really short piece, kind of in between, and then I've got a full length here. So my next one is gonna be this piece here that's kind of that medium, or kind of longer piece, which is right here. And it just happens that when you cut these, you always end up with a piece from that side when you're cutting to get to this side. Oh look, it's my doggy Pedro. So you have these two ends. This end is gonna go underneath this end. So you kind of tip this up like this and then you'll push it in. And then if you kind of wiggle it, see how it's a little space right there. Get rid of all those spaces and wiggle it and put it down just like that. When you get to this seam, this is where it gets a little tricky. We're gonna click this in like this and have this part right here, right next to that edge we're going to wiggle it until it kind of sits. You can almost hear like a soft pop when that thing clicks in right there. So now we have to close this gap. And this is where those little hammer pieces come in. Toolkit right there. So this will slide right underneath there like that. And you want to keep it up on an angle a little bit. So it's going to be like this. And we're going to tap that in. And we're gonna close up these gaps. Now you can see I've got a bigger gap here than I do there, but that's just because this other end isn't. Click that in. And you'll feel it kind of start to push down. And it closed up that gap nice and even. The last little tip I wanna show you guys is that when you're measuring from here to here to get your piece that would fit in that spot. I usually lay everything out, get them where they're gonna be so that you can know exactly where this is gonna sit. And then this piece that you would wanna put here, if you flip it around so that the edge that's supposed to be over here is over here, and you measure this, you've got a little tab on the end here. So this tab is gonna take up about a little less than a quarter about three eighths of an inch. So when you make a mark here to show where you wanna be, you can compensate for that three eighths of an inch and just move it over a little bit, but it doesn't have to be exact because you actually wanna have a little bit of space between the wall and the board. So I've been just going like maybe an eighth of an inch over and making my mark there. And then we'll cut that and when I bring it back it's going to slip right in there. I'm going to take you guys on one row with me this time so we're going to start with this piece make sure that's 
down good. What I'm gonna do is actually connect these two up and make kind of one longer piece so you can hear this. So listen really close. You can kind of hear it pop just a little bit as, it's, as it goes in. So this is what it should look like. And then we're gonna make sure that I've got about a quarter of an inch away from the wall. And we're gonna line this up just like that. Get this stuff all pushed in. Just like that. And then we're gonna use this block like this. Put that in here and pound that down. We wanna make sure this seam gets hit at the same time so that line up those seams. Okay, so now that board is sitting nice and flat. So we're gonna put this edge in here like this. I'm gonna put these things guys pretty close together and you're just gonna kind of wiggle it. There it goes, you can see it pop in there. We'll get that in there nice and snug. Go down here to the other end. You can see where it kind of lays back down. That's where you want it to be. And the more that you hit that, you can see right here, I'm up a little bit. So if I give this a little tap, it'll push it down. Get that thing nice and you can see it right there where it kind of popped in together. It's nice and tight. And if you need to tighten this butt joint up, you can pound it from the other side using the opposite end of this. You would make one of these, but it would just be backwards. So you would be using this side instead of that side. Pops in just like that. Go down here. So you can see once it gets in, it'll lay flat and you can kind of see it, that last little hit that I hit, it went kung kung and that's in locked. Okay. This is what I was talking about before. This piece will go right in here, just like this. And I gotta cut a little bit off of here. So what I'm gonna do is just flip it around like this, so it's the opposite end. We can use this end to create a mark. And the thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer so you can see in here that I gotta compensate for that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a tiny bit longer than it needs to be. Got my mark and you can see where the mark is here. It's a little bit further than that because we're compensating for that little space that's there. And then when you're done, as you can see here, I've got just a little bit of space between the wall and there. So if I cut this end off, we'll flip it around and put it back in. It should be perfect. Okay, so we got our cut. And when we put this thing in, Nice and snug in there. You can almost hear it when you get that final hit. It's a different tone with the hammer when you actually get it and drive it home kind of makes a different sound. So enough with the boring stuff, let's finish this time lapse.
So we got the floors in, they look great. I'm super stoked the way that they turned out. The one part that we really thought was gonna be a big challenge was this transition going from the addition portion of the house that I still haven't finished the wall here. But we thought there was gonna be a little bit of a height difference. We were able to feather that out and use a little bit of fix it all. And that actually makes this so you can't even feel the transition going through there. There's no height variance in there. So I'm super stoked about how this turned out. Man, it looks great. And the last floor I put in, it lasted 15 years or whatever before it was totally out of style. And it just kind of, so I, I had some water damage on some of the boards that were in here. And so they kind of came loose at the seams. Overall, I think this floor turned out great. I want to thank you guys for watching my channel. If this was helpful at all, if you guys like this video, please subscribe and hit that like button, hit the bell button for more content like this, and you'll see me in the next video. Let's